Hey guys, and welcome back. And now for something a little bit different, episode 39. Hope everybody is doing great and they had a wonderful weekend. I told you I'd be back soon, guys. Um, today I'm really excited because I'm going to be talking to you. Uh, hold on one second, if I can reach it here. It's off the slide. I'm going to be talking to you about a graphic novel uh, called Stone Star. Um, it's a little indie book. Um, and I think it's pretty cool. And I think you guys are going to like it. Uh, so today I'm going to skip what I've been watching, guys. Because if I'm perfectly honest with you, I haven't watched a ton of stuff. Because I just recorded the video on Thursday. Um, so there hasn't been a ton of stuff. And I didn't get a chance to really write it up. So I figured, eh, the hell with that. I'm not going to get into that. Um, but I am excited to be talking to you about this, guys. This is a really fun little graphic novel. Um, and I'm going to talk to you primarily about the first two issues. Um, so Stone Star um, started off kind of interesting. Um, for those of you guys who have Amazon, you know, they have that um, digital comic book thing called Comics Excology, um, where it's kind of like, I think you pay like X dollars a month and you can kind of read as much as you want. Well, apparently they also do um, original stuff. Um, and that's how this started off. This started off uh, as an original that was sponsored by Comics Excology. Um, so Jim Zub is our writer and Max Dunbar, they came up with the general premise. Um, I guess they pitched it to Comics Excology. Um, so that's how it, its origin started. And then in 2021, um, it actually got a physical release through Dark Horse comic books. So, you know, some interesting facts. I'm going to get a little bit now, I guess, uh, go into a little bit of the background stuff for you guys. Um, like I said, our main writer is Jim Zub. Now, Jim Zub is a guy from Canada. Um, he teaches actually at a college there, and I think Zanika, Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully I got that right, Jim. Um, but besides doing that, um, he's a guy that's also worked in the industry for a while, and he's worked for Marvel, DC, Capcom, uh, Cartoon Network, Bandai, Namco, and he's worked on a bunch of different titles. He's worked on Black Panther. Um, he's worked on, believe it or not, the Dungeons and Dragons comic book. Um, he's worked on Conan the Barbarian. Um, so he's kind of been a little of this, a little bit of that, you know. Uh, he's got a little interesting little resume there. And then when we get into our world of artwork, we have Max Dunbar. Max, I couldn't quite find out um, as much information uh, about his bio for whatever reason. I know he's also from Canada. Um, he's worked on stuff like Judge Dredd, uh, Champions for Marvel, um, Gears of War. I don't even know if I had a Gears of War comic book. I know the video game. Uh, Micronauts, um, also Dungeons and Dragons, and Red Sanja. So, you know, again, another guy that's done a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know. Um, so that's like some of your main players as far as the series goes. Um, now I will get into a little bit of, um, uh, information of our main characters. Um, our main character is Dale. Um, he's a teenager. Uh, he's on this floating space station called Stone Star. And basically what Stone Star is, guys, is this big, big, almost city. And it's like a spaceship and it basically they're gladiator pits. I mean, they have a community in the city. Um, but the primary thing is they're like a traveling circus, essentially. Um, but focusing on gladiator fighting and stuff like that. Um, and that's the big attraction. And they go from planet to planet. Um, it's run kind of it's kind of a dark place. Um, they're the main stars, which are the gladiators and they're the main attraction. And then you have other people that are just trying to at your living, like in the marketplace and stuff like that. And then we have Dale. Dale is a teenager, probably his late teens. Um, he's not human, although he does have human characteristics. Um, he has kind of like really big ears, almost like I want to say almost like a monkey ears. Um, but other than that, he's rather human. Um, like I said, he's a young guy in his teens. He's He's actually a thief. Um, he's kind of living on the streets with his best friend, Kitsu, which I'll go into his character a little bit in a second. Um, basically doing whatever they can do to survive. He's just 
has learned um, growing up on the streets to just kind of learn, you, you got to do what you got to do. And a lot of times that's getting into mischief and stealing things and trying to pull off little mini heists and, you know, whatever you got to do, you know, you get the kids got to do what a kid's got to do. Um, that brings us to his best friend who is Kitsu. Kitsu is this uh, also a teenager. Uh, he's like this green alien-esque, uh, green alien character. It's hard to kind of describe him, kind of furry. I mean, I'm doing a horrible job of describing him, but he's an alien, he's green, and it's really hard to get into too much detail. Um, but if you read the comic book, guys, you'll find out for yourself, and I highly recommend you do that. Um, he's his best friend. Uh, he's a very lighthearted, um, very good sense of humor and he's often the reason dale gets into trouble um he's usually the one leading him along the way if you will um and he's a cool character and if you read later on in the issues um probably like issue three or four you hear like his origin story and basically how he met dale um and it adds to the lore um i'm not going to get into that but you know more reasons for you guys to pick this comic book up um Next, we have Volnus Valdari. Um, now, Volnus Valdari is kind of like our mentor character. You could almost call him our gladiator or Ben Kenobi, if you will, I guess. Um, he's a very tall, gray alien, very angular looking face, very muscular character. He's got like this kind of like almost samurai kind of hat going on. Um, he's missing one of his arms, but he's this badass warrior. And um, he's kind of like a, a retired fighter. He, he used to be a champion. And, you know, he's very well respected in the Stone Star. Everyone looks up to him and he's got clout, you know. Um, but he's also very humble, you know. Um, he meets Dale early on, and I'll get into that in a minute, and kind of saves his ass. But again, I'm going to get into that uh, in a few minutes. Um, Hold on one second. Uh, next is Bodrid. Uh, Bodrid's uh, a female warrior. That's a gladiator. Um, her along with her, they call Effigy. Effigy is kind of like, um, his name is Pierce. He's like this big, giant, towering, giant, alien, badass fighter. And the way they, the best way to describe it, guys, in Effigy, I guess, um, if you guys have ever played Dungeons and Dragons, you know, certain characters have familiars, like, you know, rangers might have like a, a, a panther or, you know, or something like that. Well, basically, she's bonded to this giant gray alien. And it's kind of like her partner, but she kind of has control over it. And she also uses them to train, you know, um, an interesting character. Um, so she's along with Pierce, or they're, like I said, they're partners. Um, and they're friends with the character I just told you about, Volnus Vodari. Um, they don't show up too much, but they're in a couple scenes. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about a character named Kakani. Now, Kakani um, is on the planet the Stone Star lands on. The, the Stone Star lands on this planet Quell. And um, she comes from the ruling family. And when I get into the story, you'll understand the importance of her. Um, she's the princess of this planet. She's in trouble. Uh, so that is our main cast. Now I'm going to get into the story, and a lot of those characters will hopefully make a little more sense. Um, basically, like I said, it starts off, um, and like I said, there's this traveling city. It's basically like a gladiator circus you know and it goes from planet to planet on um, this particular time um this stone star travels to the planet quell and we open up and we see our main character dale uh like i said who's a thief along with his his buddy katano or excuse me not katano kitsu I'm getting names wrong here guys and uh they see some guards traveling along pushing some carts and what happens is they jump down the carts. They're like, you ready to go? Kids are like, ready to go? They jump down on these carts. They get control of them. And basically, they're trying to steal these carts with all these equipment. Um, so what ends up happening, of course, is things go wrong. Uh, things go spiraling out of control. 
Kitso ends up running because she knows all these guards are coming and he's worried. Um, meanwhile, Dale is just about to get caught. Um, he's just about to get caught, but luckily for him, we're introduced to Volnus Valdari, um, who's just standing by this marketplace. And he goes up to the guards and he's like, oh, I've got this one. I've got this under control because these guards are pissed. You know, they realize this kid's a thief and he just is about to take off with all this merchandise. But Volus Valdari comes to the rescue and he's like, I'll take care of this one. You know, and like I see, kind of like a stern, stoic character. And uh, the guards are a little bit pissed, but they also know um, our guy Volus Valdari is an important person in this community and they don't want to go against his wishes. Um, so he introduces himself to Dale, um, and Dale says, are you a gladiator? And he's like, yes, I'm a gladiator. And Dale's like, well, why did you save me? And he's like, well, because I was a young, dumb, reckless kid at some point in my life too. And I'm saving your ass, you know? And, um, they're kind of walking down the market square and Dale goes, and where are you taking me? He's like, I'm taking you to the pits. And the pits are basically uh, another terminology. Um, the gladiator pits where they train for these gladiator fights. Um, so along the way, they meet Bodrid, the character I mentioned. Uh, that's this female warrior. And uh, her partner, Pierce. Um, basically, she goes to attack Dale, and Dale moves pretty quickly, and there's some energy that comes emanating from his hands. And he's pretty surprised by it. She's very surprised by it. And Volnus Valdari is surprised by it, too, and he notices it. Um, at this point, Dale thanks um, Volnus Valdari, and Volnus Valdari says, listen, if you want, I think you have talent. I can train you and Dale's kind of like taken aback. He says, thank you, but nah, I think I'm okay. And he's like, I have to go find my friend because I'm worried about him. Because like I said, they just try to pull off this heist. And unfortunately, when they tried to pull off this heist, um, things went away. So our buddy Dale goes to find his best friend, Kitsu. Um, and Kitsu is already planning their next big heist. And Dale's like, you know, we almost got caught five minutes ago and now you want to go and pull off another heist but he's game he's like what the hell this is the, the life of two thieves living on the streets uh you know you got to do what you got to do to put food in your mouth you know uh, it's the classic rogue tale you know but set in a sci-fi world um so they go to where kitsu saw he saw their next biggest score but along the way they see a group of people. Um, these people, they're like purple. And they're more aliens again, guys. And that's when we're introduced to Kakani, um, the character I mentioned also when I was talking about characters. And she's there along with her mother and some other of her people. These are the people of Quell, the people of this planet. And you hear her mother talking to the guards. And they're like, we just need to see the leader of Stone Star. We need to tell him what's going on. He's like, um, obviously, you know, my family. We were just, everyone in my family was assassinated except for me and my daughter, Kakani. She's like, we need to talk to him to see if we can try to get some help. Um, we need to see refuge. And the guard is like, ah, fuck that. I don't give a shit. We're just here to execute you. You know, you you shouldn't be on this ship anyway. You know, you're, you, you didn't get an open invite, you know. So he's about to kill them. Um, a big fight ensues. Uh, pretty much everyone's killed, unfortunately, with the exception of Kakani. Uh, and this is where our hero, Dale and Kitsu, jump into the fray. And uh, they start basically trying to fight these guards. Unfortunately, like I said, pretty much everyone but Kakani is killed. Um, Dale grabs Kakani and he runs off. Meanwhile, Unfortunately, his best buddy, Kitsu, is captured, um, which really sucks. Um, Kakani is 
injured on her arm. Um, and Dale's frantic. He's not really sure what to do. He just knows that for once in his life, he wants to do the right thing. Instead of just being a thief, he wanted to take that journey, that hero's journey, and and try to do something good. Um, so they hide out. You know, there's this big chase that that happens. The guards are after him, and they manage to lose him. And they wait till the next morning, and they find our man, Valnus Vidari. And luckily, um, Valnus Vidari is able to uh, heal her wound. It's very severe, but he's able to do something to help her. Um, and when he does that, he's like, listen, here's what we're going to do, guys. You know, I'll help you. But for right now, they're going to be on this planet for probably another month or so. Um, the best thing to do is to hide you. And then when Stone Star moves on to the next planet, we can we can basically try to sneak you off and you guys can get off on that planet. But for right now, you just got to, you know, you're on everybody's radar, essentially, you know, and this isn't good. Um, but Kakane explains to him and she's like, no, that I get what you're saying. And that might seem like a good idea, but that's not going to work. You know, I, right now, um, there's some major shit going on. She's like, I'm the princess of Quell. My mother was just executed. My whole family was just executed. Me and my mother managed to escape. Then my mom got killed. Um, right now, there's a major uprising going on um, through a rogue faction of the government that's taken over. Um, and once they realize she's on board the stone star everyone on the stone star as well as the people of her planet will be caught up in this this quell war basically so she's saying we can't just hide out and just sneak off onto another planet she's like that's not gonna work so we've got a lot going on in this this first issue these these are the first two issues i'm talking about um there's a lot of action going on a lot of story going on i'm trying to give you guys um, a general summary without giving away the whole thing. Um, pretty awesome, though. But anyway, guys, um, just after this info is revealed, uh, we see a holographic character coming to where they're at, this room they're at, and um, basically announces the first game of the Stone Star uh, Gladiator fights are going to begin. And... That's a big deal, obviously, because like I said, it's like a big circus, these big fights that take place with these different aliens and stuff. And we see the announcement. And in this corner, we have the horrible, you know, criminals that have been convicted of crimes, horrible crimes. They will be the ones fighting off against. And of course, you see the big bad monsters in the corner over here. And one of the criminals is Kitsu. Um which makes, of course, Dale very upset because that's his best friend. And uh, that's pretty much how we end the second issue. So I, what I've done, guys, is I've tried to give you the basically the first um, two issues. And like I said, I know I kind of just did more of a summary. Um, I did want to release something, and I wanted to give you guys a taste of something I think is really good. Um, like I said, I'm a sucker for the hero's journey, guys. I love the story of a rogue character. I played Dungeons and Dragons for most of my life um, up until the last 10 years, and then I've become a slacker. But um, and every time I played him, I've always played the rogue character. And um, one thing I've always been attracted to, whether I'm reading sci-fi or I, re I read a lot of fantasy, um, or when I role play, uh, like D&D &D and stuff, I've always been attracted to the idea of the thief character. Um, and more so the thief that becomes the hero, you know, the hand solo, if you will. Um, and this is kind of something like that. You know, this has got a little bit of that whole vibe going on. It's got a little bit of the hand solo vibe. It's got a little bit of the hero, you know, um, the reluctant hero. Um, it's, it's, it's really solid. And uh, I probably didn't do the best job, but I try to do my, my best to kind of give you guys a tease, a little bit of taste for what it is, um, but without giving away the whole thing. Um, very reasonably priced, guys. I, like I said, I think whether you get the digital comic, um, the digital graphic novel volume one, um, which is the first five issues, or you buy the physical co copy, I think it was like maybe like 10 bucks. Um, so it's very reasonably priced, very well written, um, 
beautiful artwork. It has a very cinematic feel, like I mentioned in the beginning um, when I was talking. I definitely see like this could easily become either an animated series, perhaps, or even a mini series. Like right now, as far as I know, they have uh, two graphic novels. I have both of them. I haven't gotten around to reading the second one just because I've been so busy with ever, everything else going on in life, you know. Um, but definitely worth your time, guys. I highly recommend it. So, yeah, guys, that was uh, episode 39 for you. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit of a shorter video, but I wanted to get something out. And um, I love my graphic novels. And uh, hopefully you guys are a fan of comic books and graphic novels as well. Uh, definitely seek it out. So I hope you guys have a great week and I plan on, like I said, having um, another film coming up. Uh, probably I'm hoping, listen, I don't want to promise anything, but definitely by the end of this week, worst case scenario, Sunday, maybe Friday. Um, but yeah, definitely look forward to that. It's going to probably be another uh, Giuseppe Tornatore film. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure which one yet. I'm trying to go for the ones that I feel like um, are lesser known. Um, his first film is The Professor, which I still have to do a rewatch because I watched it a couple months ago and unfortunately I fell asleep. Um, either that, possibly, or there's another one that came out like 95 or 96 called The Star Maker, um, which is another one that doesn't really get talked about as much um, when we're talking about the res resume of Giuseppe Tornatore. Um, but I think it definitely deserves to be talked about. Um, also, a quick update for you guys that, that have Amazon Prime. I know I mentioned the documentary that Giuseppe Tornatore made about Ennio Morricone. Um, if you have Prime, um, it was once something that you could rent at cost for like four or five bucks. Now it's part of Prime. So definitely get on that, guys. It's a fantastic um, documentary about the composer Ennio Morricone. Um, interviews a bunch of different people. It's just amazing. Check it out, guys. That's totally worth your time. A great doc, um, especially for you doc people. Um, so yeah, guys, that's the big show for Monday. Like I said, this is a short episode. I know that. Um, obviously, you guys should be checking out Brad and Troy over at Not A Bomb. Uh, you, those guys always bring it. Last week, they talked about the Alamo. I'm excited to see what they're talking about um today i know they mentioned it but of course my memory is like swiss cheese guys got lots of holes i forget what they're talking about but i think they usually record on monday so it'll probably be out wednesday um of course we have watch skip plus with jose and alex those guys are awesome um and i think they just released an episode a couple of days ago uh, covering the film maxine um so check that out um we have the gentleman's guide to Midnight Cinema with Will and Sam. These guys always bring their A-game and they're always talking about an interesting film. Um, so definitely check out The Gentleman's Guide to Midnight Cinema. And of course, we have uh, Raiders of the Podcast. Uh, these guys are awesome. And every week they talk about two different films and they pick which one is the best. So um, these are all podcasts that I think you guys should be listening to. And they're all highly entertaining and uh, highly informative so give them a listen guys all right and hopefully i will see you guys very soon i hope you guys have yourself a great week